Hello and welcome to another video series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, I want to show you how to collect. In other words, how to make your character be able to collect objects and for you to be able to keep track of how many of that object you've collected. In other words, if you want to collect coins in your game level and then maybe after you collect 10 coins, you win the game. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on that splash screen to get rid of it. And I'm going to change my render engine to the Blender Game Engine, of course. And I'll grab this little triangle area and drag it straight down to make a second 3D viewport. But I'm going to change it into a logic editor window. So in this very simple example, I'm going to make a very simple character, my default cube. And it's only going to be able to move in one direction and it's going to collect coins. And once it collects five coins, let's say, you'll win the game. Let's go ahead and set up the character. I'll drag my default cube, my character, straight up on the z-axis. And I need to make him be able to move at least in one direction to make him be able to collect coins. So down here in the logic editor window, I'm going to press N to hide the side panel, or you can just drag it, of course, to hide it. I'm going to have to add a sensor, a keyboard sensor to my cube with it selected. I'm going to add a keyboard sensor. I'm going to click on the key button and press the up arrow. That's the key I want to use. I'm going to use uh, up right there or name this brick up. I'm going to add an actuator. It's going to be a motion actuator. And I'm going to make this uh, character have not simple motion, but he's going to have character motion. So uh, we're going to make him move positively on that green Y local axis. I could change my um, axes here on the gizmo to local. That might help if I've changed my character at all. Um, but that's why this L has to be dark pressed. Um, so let's go ahead and change Y to 0 0.5. That seems like a good number uh, from past experience. And this character needs to be affected by gravity. So with it selected, I'll go over to the uh, uh, physics tab and I'm going to change the physics type from static to character. That'll work great. Let's go ahead and I'll press shift A. I'm going to add a ground, so a mesh plane. So shift A and mesh plane. I'll tap S to scale this up, but I'll just press 25 and press enter. So now I've got a big uh, flat plane as a ground. It's a static physics type by default and a character with character physics type. And when you press up, I have to connect these two things. When you press up, um, it's going to trigger the character motion Y on the local uh, Y axis. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'll press P on my keyboard. And now when I press Y, my character moves. Hopefully you are uh, very, very familiar with that by this point. If you haven't, I'll put a link in my description below uh, to this video series on YouTube. Uh, let's go ahead and make some collectible objects. So in this video, I'm going to make a few coins that are just going to be simple cylinders. So I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard to bring up the Add menu, and I'll add a mesh uh, cylinder, and I'll put it straight up. I'm going to make it shorter, so I'll use my scale gizmo and I'll scale it down kind of like that. Maybe I'll tap S to scale it uniformly and I'll bring my mouse in, of course, and click. And I'm gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna grab my rotation gizmo and I'll rotate it maybe. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll press one and five or one and three or three and five rather to go to my front orthographic view or right orthographic view rather so I can see it from the side. Uh, of course, you can go to your uh, view menu and you can change your views here. Let's go ahead and press R to rotate and then negative nine zero and I'll press enter to make it rotate. And then maybe I'll just use my uh, rotation gizmo here to rotate it a little bit on an angle. OK, so now we have a coin. The coin still has static physics type. That's OK. I don't want the coin to move at all, um, but let's give it a material. So with the coin selected, I'm going to go to my material tab and let's just give it a new material. And the diffuse color, that means just the color, will be sort of this yellow um, goldy color. And let's turn the specular, the shininess, down to zero. Okay, we have a coin. And the coin is going to need to know to disappear when it senses that it's colliding with your character. Now, we could do this in either way. We could say, hey, when my uh, character detects a coin, delete the coin. But that doesn't really make sense so much because it's easier to make something delete itself than to have some other object tell another object to delete. So we're going to make uh, this coin have the collision detection on it for the character. Let's go ahead and with the coin selected, I'm going to add a new collision sensor. So add sensor collision. And what is it going to detect though? 
Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, which I've talked about collision, you know there's two ways of using this. You can use a property. In other words, whenever this object collides with any other object that has a certain property that we give it, we can trigger that collision. Or we can use material. So this is material property. Right now it's property. If you click this, you can choose a material. I'm going to use property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my character and I'm going to give it a property. And the way you do that, of course, is you select the cube or the character and over here, this little plus in the logic editor window, uh, or you can press N on your keyboard, that'll bring up this properties panel. Same thing with the plus. I'm going to add a game property. And if you don't know what a game property is or a property is, uh, if you're a programmer, it's the exact same thing really as a variable. And if you're not a programmer, that's totally okay. A property or a variable is basically a little piece of memory that you give a name and that can hold a piece of value. So a little part of the memory of your computer, the memory of your running game. And you can give it a name to refer to from somewhere else or sometime later. In this case, we have a new variable or new property called prop. Um, and it has a, a value of 0, 0.000. And the reason why this says float is because uh, the data type that can hold um, a decimal value number or a number that can have um, an exponent um, is float. So I'm going to change this. It doesn't really matter. Actually, I'll leave it. There are other types. I often use integer, which means just a whole number that cannot have decimals, but we'll just leave it as float. I'm going to name my character's property uh, Bob. Sure, Bob. Now, it uh, actually matters if you type in uh, capital letters here or numbers, so just keep it simple. Don't add numbers or spaces or capitals. Just keep it really, really simple here. Let's go ahead and go back to my coin. Uh, because my coin no longer has properties, that's okay. Because here, we're going to specify the collision for detecting anything that has the property Bob. So here I have to type in Bob, and it needs to be lowercase, exactly the same as I typed it before. And what's going to happen when this coin collides with Bob? Well, we want this coin to end. So I'm going to add an actuator. We're going to use that edit object actuator, and I'll connect them up. And this edit object actuator has lots of different options. You can make it uh, add a new object to the scene. And you would recognize that if you watched uh, a few of the previous videos in this series when we created spawning. So when your character dies, uh, it can respawn by using this add object um, actuator. But we're going to use um, end object. And when I select that, you'll see why we put this code on this coin uh, because we're ending this object that it's on. We can't specify some other object to end. Um, we could with a message, and we'll talk about that in a sec, but um, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so now when he collides with, or when our coin uh, collides with Bob, it's going to end itself. Let's go and see if that works. I'll press P on my keyboard to play. I'll press the up arrow on my keyboard. And it didn't. Why not? Let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to make sure it lines up properly. So I've got my coin here. I've got my character here. We're looking from the top view. I'll press P on my keyboard and it should work but it just kind of gets pushed around what's happening here well this does not happen all the time and i'm sort of glad that it happened in this video and i think it happened because of the shape of my coin and the fact that it's kind of rotated at some weird angle if i select my coin and go to the physics tab it um it doesn't have any collision bounds and that's okay because objects sort of already have a kind of a default uh sphere like collision bounds um, that you can't really specify the margin without actually clicking collision bounds, which, which would make it a box. But I just actually want to make this into a ghost. And what that means is that um, other objects won't bump into it. It won't be able to like rebound objects. It doesn't have a hard surface. But luckily for us, this collision sensor still will work, I think. Let's go ahead and try it out. So I've made this object into a static ghost. Um, so let's go ahead and press P. And I'll press the upper on my keyboard, and it's gone. The object has ended. That's exactly what we wanted. But wait a sec. We want to count. How do we do that? Well, a minute or two ago, I talked about these things called properties. And properties, if I select my coin and press N, actually, it's not on my coin. It's on my uh, Bob character. We have this Bob value that can hold a number. Well, that's what we're actually going to use to keep track of a counter. So. We could make a variable, we could make another property, in other words, on this character called counter, and we could make it an integer. And the integer is good for counting because it only has whole numbers, that's all we need. 
but I'm not going to put it on my character. And the reason why I'm not going to is because if you watched one of the last videos in which I talked about character dying and respawning, you'll know that you might end up killing your character and it might end up respawning, which means that uh, we might lose track of what uh, what values our, our properties or variables have. So I'm just going to make a new simple empty object that's going to keep track for us. It's going to be like an invisible counter object. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a new empty. And empty is just like a coordinate with a cross around it to let us see it. So I'm going to add new empty, shift A, add new empty. I'll use a plain axis here. Any of these would work, but there we go. It's right there. What I might just do is I might just put it in the middle of my scene, but higher up. It's not going to render. It's not going to show up in the game. You won't be able to see it, but it's an object that we can select at any point and we can see while we're editing the game. To this simple empty, let's go ahead and add a game property. I'm going to click add game property with it selected and we're going to make a counter. I'm going to name this counter and I'm going to make it an integer, which would mean, means just like a counting number, a counting variable. And by default, it's set to zero. That's perfect. Okay, so how do we actually make this counter count up? Well, every time we our character hits a coin, we want this object to know to count up by one, to add one to this value. Well, wait a sec, how do we make this coin communicate to this object that it needs to count one? Well, that's where we get into messages, and I briefly mentioned that a few minutes ago. When you want to communicate between objects, and I'm going to hide this properties panel, I'll press N on my keyboard, we can use a new actuator. I haven't talked about this yet. Um, it's called the message actuator. And with this message actuator, I'm going to add this to my coin. We can send a message to any object in the scene or every object in the scene or a specific object. In this case, I'm going to send a specific message to my empty. So I'm going to select this box, we'll click in it. I'm going to select empty. Now I should have given that a name. So I'm actually going to, actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it empty. Uh, you can change it if you want. But the message that we're going to send to empty, we're going to give it a subject. We're not actually going to tell it, give it a body. You can think of it as like an email. Uh, email has a subject and email has a body or text in it. We're only going to care about the subject here. And I'm going to say coin with an exclamation mark. Why exclamation mark? Because it's exciting. Okay, it's a, it's a coin being collected. That's why we're putting an exclamation mark there. It doesn't really matter. I could not, but um, what I have to do now is when this coin collides with Bob, we're going to do two things. It's going to end itself. It's going to disappear. Poof, it's gone. And it's going to shout, hey, coin, it's just been collected. So I'm going to connect uh, the and node to two things to make both these things happen. And so now we're going to make our empty, our counter object, um, receive a message. So again, we have the coin sending out a message whenever it um, collides with Bob and it also ends. So now we're going to add a listening message sensor. So on the empty, I'm going to click add sensor. It's going to listen for a message. It's going to listen for a message with the subject C-O-I-N exclamation mark and I'll now press enter. Again, you don't need the exclamation mark. Like you can put anything in here but keep it simple. Um, when it hears a message, what is it going to do? Well, it needs to add one, I'm going to press N on my keyboard, to this counter variable. So let's go ahead and do that. That requires us using a new actuator. It's called property, and it's right there. And it's property actuator, and I'm going to connect these things up so the message when it's received, it's going to do something with the property. What property is it going to work with? Well, it's going to work with the only one that we have on this object, the counter object, what do we want to do to it? We want to add one to it. So we're not going to assign it a value, that, that's the mode. We have different options here. We can toggle it, we can copy it, we can add to it, which is actually what we want, or we can assign to it. We can make it be a specific value, but we're just going to add to it, and I'm going to add the value one. So you can see how this works. If you want to add 10 every time you uh, hit a coin, you can just do the same thing here, but put 10 and it'll go up by 10 every time. Uh, but that's really how it works. If you want to make it set uh, to, let's say, a specific value, you, you could use assign. If you want it to switch between, let's say, um, zero and one, you could use toggle, okay? But uh, let's just use add, we're gonna add one. Okay, so if I press P to play my game and I go and hit the coin and it disappears, in the background counter on that empty object on the, on the cross is actually one now, but we can't see it. But 
let's go and see if it actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this same counter object, this is going to be sort of our um, eye in the sky for our scene, we're going to make a rule that says, hey, if this equals one, you've just won the game. Our game's really hard here. The goal is to touch this coin and collect it to win the game. And then we'll add more coins and change the rule. So on the empty object, I'm going to collapse these two um, logic bricks. We're going to add a new sensor. And the sensor is actually going to be watching that property, that counter property, to see if it gets up to one. So I'm going to add a new property sensor. And the property sensor is going to be looking for the property called counter. And we're going to check to see if it equals a certain value. Well, we're checking to see if it equals one, because by default it equals zero. Um, and so one will mean we won the game. So we could do things like greater than, so if it gets greater than a certain number, we'll win the game. If it's less than a certain number, we might lose the game. Uh, let's say you have a bad guy that steals coins and you get less than zero coins, you lose the game. That's what we could use that for. And you can kind of play around with these at your discretion. So if the property that's counter, the counter property is equal to one, we're going to win the game. And it's at this point that I would make a new scene. If you've watched my video on creating a win screen, um, you know how to do that. But really quickly, instead of just making a new scene, I'm going to have the game reset to start again. So I'm going to add a scene actuator and I'm going to connect my property detection for one to that scene actuator, and I'm going to restart this scene. So hopefully, when I play my game and it hits the coin, the scene's just going to go poof and reset, and everything's going to get back to its default location. Let's see if that works. I'll press P, and I'll move my coin, and as you can see, I have just made a functioning game where I can win. Let's go ahead and add a few more coins, though. So I'm going to select that coin. I'll go back to my uh, global gizmo, so I can actually just move it on the global Y axis. I'm going to press Shift D, and then I'll tap Y on my keyboard to make it only go in that direction. And let's go ahead and select these two, Shift D, and then Y to make it only go in that direction. And let's do one more five, Shift D, Y. So now I've got five coins, but if I play my game, I win after one. I don't want to win after one though, I want to win after five now. So I'll press escape on my keyboard and on my empty, this eye in the sky object, instead of checking to see if counter is equal to one, that's the win detection logic brick essentially, I'll change this to five. So as soon as my counter is equal to five, I should be able to win the game, in other words the game will reset. Let's go and see if that works, I'll press P on my keyboard and all the coins are disappearing and three, two, one, I just won the game. Okay, what I could do, of course, is I could make a new scene. I'll press plus, add a new scene. I'm going to add quickly, quickly, quickly a camera. I'll press Alt R to clear that out. I'll drag it straight up. I'm going to add a monkey head. And that's going to be the signal that you've just won the game. R, negative 90. R, 180. There we go. It's pointing up. That's what you're going to see when you win the game. And this is called win. That's my scene name. Let's go back to my game scene. I'll name it game. If I'm going really quickly, um, you can always check out my video um, in creating and winning in your game. I'm, I've already explained this in more detail. So instead of restarting my scene, I'm going to set um, the scene. And the scene I'm going to set to when I've won the game is the win screen. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to actually um, press N and zoom out my camera a little bit. Actually, I'm not going to bother. That works for me. I'll press P on my keyboard. I'm going to play. And I've won because I see a monkey head. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.